So uh, again, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for taking part uh, on a, on this very dreary uh, Friday afternoon before the long weekend, like that means anything anymore. Uh, but if it does in your family, have a great long weekend. After this, thank you again for joining us. So uh, my name is Steph Pearson. I am um, going to be leading this this afternoon. But before we get started, I'd just like to acknowledge that we Ottawa is on uh, the traditional uh, territory of the Algonquin people, but it is unceded. So we are settlers on this land and what we have, um, we are borrowing from the Algonquin people who are the traditional holders of this land. And before we get started, we'll also uh, say a short prayer. So in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Oh, I totally forgot to put my camera on. So hello again, folks. Um, so this is the team that we're working with today. So myself is uh, Steph Pearson, and we have a couple other superstars in the line. So if uh, they want to jump on and introduce themselves, that'd be great. Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Catherine Wake, and I'm also one of the LT consultants. Happy to be here. Hi there, I'm Audra Abramidis, and I'm one of the other learning technologies consultants. And not with us today, but certainly is available for all your learning technology needs is also Bill Corcoran. So you can reach out to any of us um, about Screencastify or Book Creator or any of the other tools that we have on the portal or uh, ways that you might wanna change uh, or strategies you might wanna develop in order to best need, meet the needs of your students now and into the school year when we go back to face-to-face -to -face classes. So what we're going to get to do today is we're going to look at the extension for Screencastify. How do you find it? How your students get it? What happens once you make a screencast? What happens to that video? And then how do we leverage this amazing tool to make our lives as educators uh, more simple? Like how do we give better feedback and more quickly so that our students can really learn from um, from your feedback and that they have an opportunity from point A to be able to put that in their products as they go, as opposed to just giving feedback at the end. So we'll look at some tech tips. Um, we're gonna look a little bit about single point rubric. So how to use a rubric with Screencastify. And then how do we use, how do students use Screencast to show their own learning? So that's where we're headed today. So let's look at some basics. So I'm gonna pop over here to my Google map. So Screencastify can be used on anything on your screen. It has options around just the tab, the desktop entirely, and it also has a webcam feature. So you as the teacher will have to add the screencast, okay? So I'm just gonna pretend that we've already done that so far, and I'm just gonna show you the pieces of what the, what the, um, the actual tool does. So you'll see up here on my uh, extensions bar, it's a little arrow with a little video camera through it, okay? students have this push to them already. So if they are signed in, in their Google Chrome, they will automatically have this extension. So that means it's one less thing that you have to worry about and teach your students to do, but they do need to make sure that they are signed in. So when you add the extension or when the students first use the extension, they have to associate their OCSB account with the, um, the screencast um, extension. So essentially, it literally takes two minutes to, to figure out. So I believe that everyone be able to use this in the next few days. So you click on the link and you have a few options. So you have a browser tab. So if I choose this, all you're gonna see is this bottom piece of the map. If I choose desktop, just like right now in my screen, in my screen share, you can see all the tabs that I have open. And this is one that's really useful if you're going to click on something and another tab is gonna open. You're gonna to wanna to use this desktop option. And then you also have a webcam so that this option is if you only wanna show your beautiful face or have your students show your beautiful face. Again, I would really challenge you to start using the webcam um, because it's really important that we model those, um, those options for our students. So here I am, I'm going to embed the webcam so I can see both the, the, tab, the, um, the map that I'm showing as well as my face. So again, um, this is, uh, again, one of my portfolios is e-learning and one of the, the biggest um, understandings of how do we get kids to be engaged in e-learning is when they see their teachers as human beings. They miss you, they miss your gorgeous face. Even teenagers who pretend they don't wanna see you, they wanna see you. We miss human contact. So put your face in there, embrace it. It's a really good thing to do. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is go, I'm going to click on this option, show more options. I can change how long my countdown is. So I can go up to 10 seconds. So if I need a lot of time to think about what I'm going to say before I do it, I might change it to 10 seconds. I like three seconds. I'm going to also use the drawing tools and I'm going to show you those in a second. And if I have an audio that is playing from this actual tab, I might actually, I will record that. And, it's, and it records it a little bit more efficiently than if it's picking up through the microphone. So all that is, once I have that all set up, I'm gonna hit record. So the next thing, so there's my beautiful face and I can move this around the screen because sometimes it's not in a convenient spot, okay? You'll also notice that you have, this comes up and this dialog box only comes up when you are using the dis, um, your entire screen, when you choose um, your entire display. So I'm gonna choose this, but you'll notice I actually can hit, yeah, yeah, a share, share, but notice it's grayed out because I have to click this first. I have to choose that screen first and now I can hit share. So it counts me down, boom, I'm in Screencastify. So what I need to do is maybe I wanna draw your attention. Oh, I'm gonna draw your attention to the Coliseum here. So you'll notice that I have these drawing tools down here at the bottom, okay? I can choose a whole variety of colors. So I'm gonna choose red and I'm going to draw some other things. I'm gonna tell you that maybe this is a place that you don't wanna send students, but this is might be where you're gonna have um, museums. So I'm gonna to talk to students about what it looks like the landscape about, of central Rome, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe it, the, the, the history of it, uh, it, ancient Rome and now I'm finished talking or maybe I need to change something so I'm going to pause my video so you can see right here I can pause my video down here or I can pause my video up here at the extension so I'm going to click the extension because that's um, will always be there even if your tools aren't and I can hit pause so right now I'm not recording what I can do is restart the video if I think I've screwed it up and I want to try again I can restart or I can just give up on this altogether and hit delete. But instead, what I'm gonna do is actually go down here to this erase tool, and I'm gonna erase some of these drawings. So say I'm a math teacher and I wanna delete some of the drawings that I've done on a math, um, on a math image, okay? So now when I hit go again, so on this toolbar, it's gonna be the play button, and on my Screencastify, it's going to be uh, the play button. Okay, so here I go, play, and now I'm recording again. I'm on minute 50, 50, or sorry, I'm on minute, one minute, not 59 minutes. I've been here a long time. So now I'm recording, but you'll notice that if as I move, I can actually delete some of that and I can go back to recording and putting more ink on there. This is a great thing for Grised. You can use it for kids can record themselves doing movement, and then you can use these tools to um, annotate your TSN turning points or whatever. Okay, so when I am finished, I am done talking. I'm gonna go either back up here or down here and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna choose stop. So what happens now? Well, Screencastify is just so darn clever. It's gonna automatically open uh, the document, okay? It's gonna open a new tab and you can see right at the top here, it's saying, I'm gonna save it to Google Drive, which means that most of your job is done. Your students, if they're using the exact same thing, they can't screw this up either. It automatically saves to Google Drive until you tell it to do something else, okay? So now we have a bunch of more options in Google, um, in this, sorry, in this um, new tab that's been opened by um, Screencastify. So I can start at the top here. I can say, I can give it a new title, okay? I can uh, view details. So if I want to know information about the video, I can click here. I can delete it if I decided that I'm done with this, okay? I can um, copy this link. So if I hit copy shareable link, now what I can do is now I can share that in a variety of different places. So I'm gonna show you that in a second after I've kind of gone through more of these options. When I, it defaults, it actually defaults to private. So when you first start using Screencastify, it's gonna default as private, which means that every time you go to share a video, you need to remember to go in and share and change those settings, just as you would in a Google Doc or, or something like that. Um, so I have a trick. When 
you first use Screencastify. The first time you do it, Screencastify actually makes its whole its own folder right there in your Google Drive. So this is Screencastify, and these are all the videos that I have uh, have created. So mine is uh, this is actually a shared one, but this is it. Basically, is a folder called Screencastify. It's going to be in your drive, okay? And what I can do is then I can share it. And the trick is. As a teacher or as a tech consultant, we use this tool all the time to show people how to use this. So I'm actually going to go down to Git Shareable Link, and I'm going to change this to anyone with the link. I'm going to change this to anyone with the link, which means that if it's a parent, if it's a student, if it's a colleague, if it's someone else who I'm trying to get tech support for, say, uh, ATE. I can share that link with the person I'm trying to get a hold of and everything is going to be a lot more clear. But the reason I want to change this entire folder is now I don't have to worry about doing that every time I have a video. Okay, so Screencastify automatically saves, it automatically saves a drive and it automatically sh um, shares in your, um, in the Screencastify link. Okay, so um, all that to say is that's basically the long and short of how to use it. You can also publish to YouTube, you can get embed code. And one of the things that we really, really love is these options down here. So you can download it and put it right on your hard drive if you want. You can export it as an MP4, then you can share it with, uh, you can put it on a CD or a DB drive. So if you wanna get crazy and old school, you can export the audio only. So this is maybe somebody who is uh, blind or low vision, you could just send the audio clip. Um, it's also a really good tool if you wanna be playing with podcasts, okay? And the last one is a GIF. And what's brilliant about GIFs is that you can make really short how-to videos and populate them inside a Google Doc. And that's different than in a Google Slide where you can have a video that's populated, but in a Google Doc, you can't have a live video. So using a GIF with the really short pieces of information like click here, look for this tool, um, it makes things a lot easier. So you can export as a GIF in that respect too. Okay, so that's that screen. Um, I think that's got us to, oh, okay. So then that said, uh, I'm just gonna lead you to the staff portal. So um, the staff portal is because teachers and educators, the OCSB email users, you do not have Screencastify pushed to you. So again, you have to add it. So you're gonna go to the staff portal and you can click on here. You're gonna get taken to the Chrome web store. Mine says remove from Chrome because I already have it. If you don't have this tool, it's going to say add to Chrome. So you click that button, you go through the yes, yes, yes associated to my account and wango bango, you're going to have it up here as well. Okay, so that's going to make things really, really easy for you. The next thing that you have to make sure is once you go to use Screencastify, you might get a couple pop ups that basically say, are you good with using the microphone? Are you good with using the video? So you just have to allow, but be prepared that your students may have the same concern. So um, again, we vetted this tool. We know that it's um, that it's it meets our privacy and security features, and so it is safe for your students to use, okay, and for you to use as educators, okay. So that's how you add that. Let me go back to my information here. So again, there's the tool. So all of the things that are there that you're going to need, and we've already talked about the videos, so that you have those, you know where those are going to go. Um, Catherine made this amazing video to walk you through how Screencastify works, so in case you need that for future reference. And so now that we have an idea of how this Screencast tool works in the very basic, why do we care? Well, I can tell you it's going to make your life so much better. So the first thing, let's say I have uh, little people that I'm teaching. So maybe grade twos, grade ones, grade twos, they may not be uh, particularly um, advanced readers yet. So this might be an assignment that I'm giving. I want them to use their five senses and describe a location for a writing project or something like that. So I can write the directions here, but Google Read and Write doesn't actually work super well with drawings, but I want them to use the drawing tools. Well, I can record video or audio instructions. So I can, oh, that's the wrong link. I left over here. So I can upload a YouTube video, or I can upload a Screencastify video showing them exactly what the document looks like and walking them through what I need them to do. So automatically, those students, Miss, I don't remember. Miss, I don't remember. Could you tell me again? 
you just point them towards the video. Watch the video again, friend. Watch the video again, friend. And so you'll find that even when you're back to a face-to-face classroom, that this might actually make life a lot easier for you. That once you set them up with the video, they're able to run with it yourself. And the other thing that we started doing is if I was away from my classroom, I'd make a screencastify of the expectations I had for my occasional teacher to be able to show my students. And then there was no excuses. The students couldn't say, you didn't tell us that because it's all in the video. So again, gives me peace of mind that the students know exactly what I'm expecting and they can't be, they can't um, pretend that they didn't know what was going on. So um, becomes a really easy way to do that. So that's one way you can use it. The other thing is if you have um, a student. So again, we're talking about feedback. So how do we give students better feedback? So here's another activity, maybe for little people. Um, they were given this diagram and they have to talk about what living things, what are characteristics of living things. So our little friend is given this answer. Okay, so they've got some solid pieces here. So let's give them feedback. I don't want to type, that takes too long. Or perhaps my little friend doesn't read very well. Or perhaps um, my friend is ESL and I need to also provide the audio for that student. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my screencast. There I go. And I'm going to use the browser tab this time because this is a, the only want this screen to be shown. So now I'm recording my tab. There's me in the corner. Hi, me. And now I can talk to my student. I can actually make reference to exactly what they've done and tell them about it. I can maybe point to, well, yes, I see little friend that you may have said that um, you may have said that um, animals, that living things are plastic. Well, all the plastic things are on non-living. So maybe that's not a really a good suggestion. Do you have a better? So again, I can engage with the worksheet and give verbal and, and information to my students. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit stop. All right, again, it's gonna open in another new tab. It, it takes a little time because basically what the screencast is doing is tying it to your drive. So it takes a little time for all those little bits and bytes and all those little doobly doos of, of internet technology. It takes a little while to go from the video into um, the screencast. So give it a second. You'll see that that red bar is gone and now I have a copy of the shareable link. So I copy and now I go back to my friend's work, which is here. Okay. I use this, so I've highlighted a couple pieces here, something that's relevant to the feedback I'm gonna be providing. I have a little comment button that comes up here, or if you like, you can choose the comment button here, but I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna tag my friend. So here's my friend, there's Bill, I'm gonna give him some feedback. So this little plus sign means that he's gonna get an email. He's gonna get an email. So again, in, in this asynchronous model, um, we may not be able to talk to our students directly, so we can send them an email to let them know that you've given them feedback. So there's Bill, he's going to get an email. I'm going to drop in, this is the Screencastify I just made about the student's work. I'm going to sign in there, and in a little less than two minutes, I have shared this with the students. I've given them feedback, and I can go on to the next thing. The beauty of this is if you're working in something like Habra Workspace, you can just go down the list of students in that submit field and just give really quick feedback, okay? Of course, that also becomes a little more challenging if you have a dark a barking dog in the background or, you know, a singing a singing partner. But, you know, you can get those ideas and the students really love that, that human interaction. So that's one way to give feedback. Another way to give feedback is, for example, I'm gonna move towards my, my single point rubric. So this is just a really fancy, although super simplified way to give feedback. What we really like about the rubric is, A, it's as simple as humanly possible. It says, these are the criteria that you need to be able to be successful. However, comma, they also say, I'm gonna tell you where you need to improve and what you need to exceed or what you have exceeded so that students are really forced to think about, well, why do I, what did I need to do given what I knew that I had areas for improvement? How did my presentation not go the way I wanted to? Why did I not meet the criteria for food? So this time, again, I'm going to go back to Screencastify, I'm going to record, and I'm going to tell them, okay, um, when the barbecue happened, the food was in correct temperatures, not only that, it was served at a perfect temperature to the cold salad, and it was very decorative presented. So this is my evidence that you are in exceeding. 
So then I'm going to talk about presentation. Well, let's say absolutely met criteria, absolutely met criteria here, blah, 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 blah. Gives more details. Again, literally it's taking me 30 seconds to do. I'm going to hit stop. So 30 seconds, literally all the video I needed. You can see it's saving to drive, little orange bar. I'm going to copy that link. And now I'm going to go back to that student information. I'm going to highlight these bars because that's what this kid got. I'm going to go to the comment feature. I'm going to say, hey, Audra, you served a great meal last night. Drop in that information. And then I'm going to hit comment. And then now Audra has connection to this, the work that she's done, my feedback that took me literally 30 seconds to do, and she has that information. Again, think about how much we can say in 30, 30 seconds or a minute versus how much we can, how long that takes us to type. And when we are serving students who have various needs about that particular, um, whether they can hear or see or, or whatever the case may be, this becomes a really important way for us to communicate with them. Um, so um, again, if that's something that you've forgotten, there's a really short how-to video of how to do that in, um, in, uh, on our how-to channel, okay? And what else did I want to tell you? Um, okay, so, so that's kind of ways that we can use uh, Screencastify for information. We can provide students with verbal instructions on uh, a, a digital tool. We can provide feedback or, or feed forward, if you will, as they go. We can provide screencasts of all the steps to do in a, in a, in a task. And one of the great tips we got a few years ago was from uh, Edu Guru, Guru Alice Keeler, who said, use shorter videos and make more of them. And the reason you want to do that is because it actually allows you to see which part of the step of the process are the students having the most trouble with. And as a result, you'll be able to identify and isolate. That's formative feedback for you. That's feedback, um, that's assessment for learning. You get to see, okay, where are the problems and how do I address those? So again, lots of little micro videos. We even got an email already this morning from one of our learners this morning who said, I took a risk, I put myself on screen and I'm really excited that I did that. So again, this is also an opportunity for you to learn about how do we better engage or how can I maximize my engagement with my students? Okay, so all that to say, now how do our students use it? Well, French teachers rejoice. This is such a great way to capture that audio um, component, that, that verbal speaking component for your, for your people, students who are, learning, uh, who are learning French. It's great for our ESL friends to be able to start and communicate with their French, uh, with their, their, their English language um, communication. So again, how do you go about doing that? Well, you give a, stu a student a digital assignment. Notice it's not a PDF because PDFs become really difficult because we can't attach comments to it. But in this sort of assignment, instead of writing, I taste the granola bar, who's to say as a student, I can't write or speak an answer instead? So again, students are going to do the exact same thing. Go to their screencast, uh, choose a screencast, um, choose the tab so they can show their work. And they're going to speak their answer and then pop that answer right in. Again, they can, if they don't want to be on the camera, they don't have to be, but they can speak right on there. Or maybe when they are finished this sort of work, this is what they typed, maybe afterwards they can tell us a story using those five senses. So that in, this becomes the graphic organizer and then they orate the story that they've, they've learned. Okay, again, really, really essential tools. And think about all our little friends who have difficulty writing with their fingers, okay? Writing with typing or writing with their, their pens. We use something like writing with voice. So we can use the speech to text um, function in read and write or in Google. Or when we give students prompts, we can ask them to use Screencastify to give us answers back as well. And again, this might make the difference between a student being successful or a student not being successful. If we're imagining a place, why not send them to a canyon? Send them on Google Maps to somewhere. Okay, uh, let's do Grand Canyon. Sure, why not? Oh, apparently I'm going to Rome. That's not what I meant. Okay, so let's go Bryce Canyon National Park, Utah. So we're just going to jump over there. And now we can see it. So again, my street, my students can then jump over to this location. And then they talk to me about, <laughs> oh, that's a good direction. Sure, why not? 
Um, so let's pretend we're going to drive. We're going to go from this place in Rome to there, and it's not going to have a little bit of time. But again, we can have students screencast this exploration because we know we don't learn from getting it right all the time. We learn because this one didn't work and this one can't. So again, getting the students to screencastify as they click through the internet, how much formative information can we get about what our students are doing? How much can we get about why they're choosing? Like, even if the answer is as simple as go to Google and look up your favorite animal. So first of all, the fact that I'm writing Google in the Omnibox tells me a lot about how my students are thinking. If they don't know that that Omnibox is a Google uh, a search bar in the first place, then we can, we can help teach them. Okay, so now I'm on my Wombat search. Again, what information are you learning about your students? Well, do I click on one of these because it's at the beginning? Think about what people click on with um, vaccination research or COVID research. There are things that are coming up in the top that aren't necessarily um, the best thing. So do we see our students being discerning when they scroll through this and talk about why they're choosing this stuff? Or can we show our students how you think about a Google search? Again, quick videos to say, well, I'm not gonna choose, um, I'm not gonna choose Wikipedia because it's not gonna be enough pictures for a student. Okay, so, ooh, National Geographic. I know National Geographic is a great lo location, so I'm gonna choose that. Again, now I'm still talking about the choices that I'm making, again, either as a teacher or as a learner, and I can really put some feedback about what that's about. Um, okay, so again, oral presentation, we've seen some really cool opportunities where uh, you can screencast a Google Meet or a Hangout. We are screencasting right now the live stream, so we're recording the live stream of this so that we can put it on our HowTo channel later. So again, it's not necessarily just people talking to their computers, it can be people talking around a computer or a recording of what's on the screen. Um, in classrooms, we've seen students having a conversation and Screencastify is running at their little station so that it's recording the conversation that the students have, okay? And what we really want you to know is there's tons of support. If you wanna leverage Screencastify more effectively in your classroom, there is tons of professional development. So there are two types of um, certification for adults. One is Master the Cast, which is basically all the steps around Screencastify. And the second one is a genius. And they both take about an hour a piece. Uh, the genius does what's called app smashing. So it takes Screencastify and embeds it into other places and how you can leverage it more effectively. Uh, Catherine reminded me this morning that um, there is even a junior level certification, so um, which I'll pop in here as well. Um, but it is an opportunity for your, you can send your students to get a little junior screencaster award, right? So how cool would that be kids being able to put that on their, on their signature? Um, so again, but again, it, it, it allows you to take some time to do that feedback while the students are learning how to use these new tools. Um, so people who love keyboard shortcuts, I love them. Here's a bunch of uh, keyboard shortcuts. The one I use all the time is the Alt-T that turns my, my toolbar on and off. Um, two other resources that we wanted to make sure that you had access to. If you hover over these images, you'll get taken to um, a, a link. So 24 ways to use Screencastify in, the, um, in your classroom. And this one has uh, quite a few more uh, examples. It's about twice as many. Uh, maybe there's something that will work in your classroom as well. And again, fast feedback is really, really important in terms of getting students to improve their writing. It's not good enough to constantly give it to them only at the very end when they're not going to see that type of project again. Okay, so I just flew through that really, really quickly. So I'm actually going to jump back to Audra and Catherine to see if there's any questions that have come in that maybe or if there's something they've been watching and maybe I've missed. So I'm just going to uh, stop sharing my screen and, and see what else we have here. Steph, could you maybe put on your um, first screen that has the link to the questions, just so if people have any questions that they've thought of as they've been listening, they could uh, they could put them in there. That would be great. Oh, I need to share my screen again. Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> All good. So there is a link there if you do have any questions. Um, Steph's going to display it there for you just in a moment. Um, and in terms of questions, so um, one question is, um, if, if I'm using Screencastify on my laptop, um, I found that it's very easy to use, but if, if I have students who are working on different devices, so iPhones or tablets or Android devices, 
Um, how easy is it to use Screencastify on some of those devices? So luckily I have brilliant people that I work with. So we found out this morning, again, if you have a Chrome tablet, so there's a few that are floating around in the world and an Android tablet, and I, ladies, you're gonna have to verify or not. Um, if you're working in the Chrome environment, you can still access your, your extension there. So those two types of tools work. Apple, as always, is a little bit difficult. There is a screen recording tool on Apple. So um, there's tons of um, articles written about how do you access that so you can send those to your students and they can record that way. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then in terms of um, students accessing Screencastify, so if I was a student, how would I find Screencastify? Do I just go to the student portal or what do I do? That's a great question. So again, as a student, we want to make sure that our students are logging into Chrome. And the reason we want students to be logged into Chrome, we want their smiling little faces or their little initials up in that top right hand corner, because that tells us that the student has synced their profile, their OCSB student profile with the, 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 the Chrome at large, which means that those all those apps uh, that our board purchases for our students' usage is pushed directly to them. So that's things like Read and Write and Equatio, um, High Octane Equatio and Screencastify. Um, so students really need to make sure that they're logged into their a Chrome account. And again, it has to be Chrome. It can't be Safari. It can't be Firefox. So this is something that we really want to keep people working on. And then once they hit that sync button, once they've associated, it'll automatically pop up. Now, not to this day that it's going to work perfectly. We do find that sometimes once students haven't, if the students haven't used it before, it's a few hiccups in order to get started. Great, thank you. Um, if we use the plus link in a comment on a Google Doc that is read by someone not in the OCSB, OCSB and maybe they don't have Screencastify, can they view it? Absolutely, because what they're really gonna, what it's doing is it's creating a, um, a viewable link to your, your Google Drive. So just like you can um, share a, a Google Doc or a slide with your parent community who won't have OCSB accounts, if you have that unlisted so people can view outside of OCSB, that's what you're doing with your screencast. So that, again, really, really useful to help guide parents through hiccups that they might be having with student work. Okay, great. Um, is there a video, a how-to video that we can share with students about how to use Screencastify? Excellent question. So um, I forgot to check at lunch today, but uh, if there isn't already on our YouTube channel, we can certainly create one. And I'm sure there is all kinds of them that already exist on the internet. So um, it's always, uh, you know, we have those immediate questions. Sometimes the best is just go to the Google and see what you can come up with, but certainly we can make one. Uh, that is, is directly tied to our student users. Okay, great. Um, and you already showed us the keyboard so, uh, shortcuts, but I often accidentally close the drawing bar and then I can never get it back after I've closed it. So is there an easy way to do that? Great idea. So I'm gonna jump in just to, to show this again. So I'm gonna record my tab. So you can see that my toolbar is available there. So I'm going to use the Alt T and you can see that I'm using, so I've got my keyboard on the Alt button and I'm hitting T and then it disappears. And then I hit it again and then it reappears. Okay. Um, and you can also, I forget, I feel like webcam. Yeah. So there you go. Alt is W. Uh, I can move my webcam. I can also, if I'm feeling crazy, I can flip. So if I have uh, writing, you can read, you can't read. Oh, you can read my writing that way because it's flipping it from the original concept. So there's standard. Here's flip, so now you can actually read what I'm talking about. So if I have other anchor charts maybe that I wanna talk about with this information, then I can do that. And I can all of a sudden make it boom, make it real big, or I can make it real small and make it disappear with all W. I'm just gonna stop that. Wonderful, thank you. Um, their screencast is still, the question is their screencast is still protected though. No one is sharing with a wider audience than they anticipated. We have some parents who really don't want work widely shared. Okay, great, great suggestion. So what I would have you do, especially if there's little people, um, you can have the students drag their Screencastify um, folder. So that folder that is automatically generated with Screencastify, drag it into your class folder. 
So again, if that's if it's really little and that might be challenging, what I would suggest is going to HAPRA in the dashboard function, and then you can actually do that for your students because you, as elementary school teachers, uh, have access to your, all your students' drives. So you could actually do that for students if you're concerned. Um, and again, the link is shareable, but again, if if people or they can share it directly with you. So again, I think I showed you um, in your more options. Oh, sorry. In your more options, one of the options is to send in an email. So again, you can have the students share directly with you, okay? Or they can generate an, uh, a QR code for that, for that work as well. What happens if I click on that unlisted button there that says people who have the link can view it? Do I have options to change that? Absolutely. So you have all of these different options. So again, it, it defaults. Um, I forget which one now it defaults at. I believe it's unless no, it defaults to private until you share it. Okay. And then it may ask you who you want to share it with. But you can change every video individually to different pieces here. So for example, if I'm sending it to someone outside of the OCSB, I might make it public or unlisted. Or if I'm sharing it within the school board, I might make it one of these two, depending on who my audience. If I accidentally closed this window, where would I, what would that look like in my Google Drive? Could you show me? Oh, excellent idea. So this is where we're going to go back to our screencast. So I'm going to go find my screencastify um, folder. Okay, so here I go looking for my screencastify folder. So I know that I already have a folder that is not shared with me. And in case you haven't noticed, you can, there's this little button here, which allows me to see more information about Screencastify. So this video is actually owned by uh, student 16. This one is owned by an academic. And then this Screencastify is actually owned by me. So I'm going to click on that. And there are all my Screencastify videos. So I have all of them saved here. I can see them since time immemorial. I think I, have, I myself have created like 150 of them. Um, but I can see them there. So again, all I need to search for is Screencastify and they will all be there. The other place you can look for them is once one of those, um, you can, once it pops up, you can search for it in the, excuse me, the extension itself. If you click on the little hamburger, you can get my recordings there. And again, that looks like this. So all my screen recordings are gonna pop up. One of the things that I don't love about Screencastify, it's really hard unless you've been very specific about how you've uh, titled your documents, it's, they don't sort very easily. So then if I know I'm finding something, let's say I'm finding something about Chrome, I use the, alt, the, the control F, the find function. And so then it kind of shows me where those are. So it kind of, it's, it's not a perfect system, but it's uh, certainly, there's all kinds of information that I can pull up from that. I see that some of your videos are called untitled and some of them have a name. Can you show me how to change the name of the video again? Excellent. So um, again, that automatically when that video opened, when I hit stop, the video opened on this orange bar at the top. If you click on here, that's where you change the video title. Great. Thank you. And in your Google Drive, can you show me how I would share um, a video? Like if I wanted to share it just with one parent? How would I share one of those files just with one parent? Okay, so I'm gonna go into this. I want this assignment to go to a parent. So again, I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go share. And I have my information. So I'm probably gonna change this to uh, private. So I'm gonna restrict it so that only the people who can have this link can open, okay? So then now I can share this with just Catherine. So she's going to get here is your child's work. Okay. And she can, she can edit or comment on it. Bingo, bango. She has that as well. Perfect. That seems so easy. <laughs> that is it for all of the questions that we got from today. Perfect. Um, the only other thing that I'd like to add, and I really, really appreciate your your participation and, and taking your time out on the, on the on the Friday afternoon to to sit with us. 
Um, if you could spend two seconds, and there is a link on the very last page um, to provide feedback. So we're really looking to get more information from our educators, from our staff, about how we can better serve you as an LT department as, and as a larger um, central office. So any feedback you can give us would be really, really great. So there's a, a link right here. There's also a link on the PD uh, website on the portal as well. So again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone. I just want to quickly hop in just to thank Steph so much. Audra and I were texting each other at the uh, behind the scenes being like, she's on fire. She's doing so great. And I think the part that really resonated with me was when you were talking about different ways to use Screencastify. So when we think about the triangulation of data and assessment, how do you actually capture those conversations? And just putting a Chromebook at a center where the students are just talking but then at least that teacher doesn't have to be there in order to hear what's going on. The teacher afterwards can use that information to inform the practice. So honestly, that was amazing. It was so well done. And I did catch a doobly-doo and I did catch a wango bango. So woo woo. Um, and people were really appreciative on Twitter. I know that uh, our superintendent, Jeff Edwards is listening. We know that Joan Barry is also uh, watching. So thank you to everyone who joined us and Steph, you absolutely crushed that on a Friday afternoon. And for anyone who missed part of it or have a has a friend or colleague that wants to uh, see it as well, it will be available on our um, OCSB How To YouTube channel, as well available on uh, our PD website under On Demand Sessions.